Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fetch YouTube channel. I'm Haley, the newest member of the Fetch content creation team. Now, have you ever wondered why people use formulas within their Revit families? Well, if you've ever thought that, I'm glad you're here today because you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to show you why it is crucial to use formulas within your Revit families. Okay, so why formulas in Revit? That's a big question I know a lot of people have. Formulas allow you to create more adaptable families. Instead of manually adjusting dimensions and parameters in your family editor each time you want a different size model, formulas let you set relationships between your parameters. So this means when one parameter changes, others adjust automatically based on data validation. We're using the formula to validate whatever the user types in, and it will return to a correct dimension. So for instance, if the length is changed, the associated width and height or other dimensions can update without you having to manually tweak each one. This will save you so much time and effort in design and ensure consistency throughout your design process. All right, so before we get started in Revit, I wanna share a great resource that I use to keep my formulas organized when I'm building a family within Revit. So whether you're managing a small set of formulas or working on a complex mathematical project, Notepad++ is a fantastic tool for organizing your work. One of the best things about Notepad++ for me is the syntax highlighting. This can be customized to anything of your needs. When I work with formulas, the ability to color code different variables, functions, and operators makes it so much easier for me to spot errors and understand the structure of my work. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at a simple box family that I have here in Revit. On the left side of the screen, you'll be able to see my family editor box, and then on the right side, you'll see where I have my Notepad++ where we'll work all of the formulas. So for this family, I have parameters that include width, depth, and height that we're gonna control using formulas. So let's go ahead and begin with our width formula. For this family, the width can be any measurement from 12 inches to 48 inches. So I wanna create a formula that allows for widths for any size greater than or equal to 12 inches and less than or equal to 48 inches. All right, so our width formula is telling us that if the user enters a width less than the minimum width, we're gonna get the minimum width. Otherwise, if the width that they enter is greater than the maximum width, they're gonna get the maximum width. Otherwise, you're gonna get the width you enter. Pretty simple. But note here that we must close out our formula with parentheses based on how many lines we have in our formula. So for this width formula, I will close it out with two parentheses. So the width formula that we just created helps to validate our input based on the width measurements that we're given. This ensures that our width will never go below or above the limits that we have set. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this formula into the family editor under actual width. By placing the enter width formula under actual width, this ensures that any change that we make to the enter width will automatically update to the actual width. All right, so let's move on to the depth formula. This formula will look really similar to our width formula that we just created. The dimensions for the depth in this family can go anywhere from 12 inches to 48 inches, but in six inch increments. So I wanna create a formula that allows for depths of any size greater than or equal to 12 inches and less than or equal to 48 inches that go in six inch increments. So our depth formula is telling us that if the depth that we enter is less than the minimum depth, it will return to the minimum depth. Otherwise, if the depth we enter is greater than the maximum depth, it will return to the maximum depth. Otherwise, if the depth that we enter is within the valid range, the formula will use the round up function. This divides the entered depth by six inches, then rounds it up to the next whole number and multiplies the result by six inches. Also, remember to note to properly close out your formula with these parentheses, keeping in mind that the number of closing parentheses corresponds to the number of nested conditions in your formula. So for this formula, I'm going to close it with two parentheses. So again, we're creating formulas so that we can go back and validate our data. So the formula we just created goes back and does just that. So based on the depth measurements we're given, it'll go back and check our data. This ensures that our depth will never go below or above the limits that we have set. So now let's copy and paste this formula and put it into the family editor under actual depth. Just like before, placing our enter depth formula under actual depth ensures that any change that we make to our enter depth will automatically update our actual depth. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the formula for our height. But we're actually gonna create three formulas for our height. And you may be thinking, why am I creating three formulas for the height when I only had to create one for the width and the depth? Now, 
I'm glad you asked that or you're thinking that because not only do I want to adjust the overall height, I actually want to adjust the height for each block that I'm putting in my family and I want to adjust the number of levels. All right, so out of the three, let's actually start creating our formula for the block height. It will be under actual block height parameter in the family editor. So the dimensions for the height in this family range from 12 inches to 48 inches in a 12 inch increment. So I want to be able to create a formula that allows for height of anything greater or equal to 12 inches and less than or equal to 48 inches. So just like the depth formula, we're going to see the roundup function in this formula to validate our input. So this formula is going to look very similar to our depth formula. The formula tells us that if the block height we enter is less than the minimum height, it will return to the minimum height. Otherwise, if the block height that we enter is greater than the maximum height, it will return to the maximum height. Otherwise, if the entered block height is within the valid range, the formula is going to use the roundup function. Remember, this is going to divide the entered block height by 12 inches, then round it up to the next number, and then multiply the results by 12 inches. So remember that the roundup function will always ensure that if the result of the division is a fraction, it's going to round up to the next whole number. Also, make sure you properly close your family with parentheses, keeping in mind that the number of closing parentheses will correspond to the number of nested conditions that we have in our formula. So for this formula, I'm going to close it out with two parentheses. Now that we have that worked out, let's go ahead and copy and paste that into the family editor under actual block height. Just like before, we're placing the enter block height formula under actual block height. So this will ensure that any change that we make to our enter block height formula, it will automatically update our actual block height formula. Let's go ahead and move on to our second formula that's going to report back to our height constraints. This parameter is going to be called actual number of levels. This formula will allow integers greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 4. So this new formula is going to tell us that if the number of levels that the user enters is less than the minimum number of levels, you will get the minimum number of levels. Otherwise, if the number of levels is greater than the maximum number of levels, the user will get the maximum number of levels. Otherwise, you will get the number of levels that you've entered. So like before, note here that we must close out our formula with parentheses based on how many nested conditions that we have in our formula. So for this formula, we're going to close it out with two parentheses. Just like before, the formula that we're creating helps validate our input based on the block height intervals that we were given. So this is going to ensure that the number of levels will never go below 1 or above 4, based on the limits that we're setting. Now that we have this formula, let's go ahead and put it under the actual number of levels parameter box. Again, placing the enter number of levels formula under the actual number of levels will ensure that any change you make to the enter number of levels will automatically update it to the actual number of levels parameter. Now that we have this formula in our family editor, we actually need to assign the labeled dimension in our front elevation view. We need to assign the labeled dimension to actual number of levels so that when we actually want to adjust the levels, it reports back to our formula and works appropriately. So right here, I'll open up my front elevation view and I will click on the number that is assigned to the block height and I will change it to the parameter actual number of levels. When I do that, I'll be able to see that my block height will actually change according to how many number of levels I want to put in. So I'll go ahead and change it, hit apply and OK, and then I can see that my block height has changed to four number of levels. So let's finally work our third formula to validate the overall height of our family. This formula will be a simple math expression using our actual block height and actual number of level parameters that we just created. So remember, the actual block height is going to represent the height of a single block in our family. And the actual number of levels refers to the number of levels or boxes that we're going to have in our family. So the formula actually multiplies the height of a single block, the actual block height parameter, by the number of levels, the actual number of levels parameter, which gives us the overall total height of our entire structure. Now that we have all of our basic conditional formulas for our width, depth, and height, let me show you how these formulas look in action. So just by taking a short amount of time to create these data validating formulas, we save so much time when we're designing. You want to design, right? You don't want to be going and fixing errors all the time. And formulas is the perfect way to do that. Now that we have good formulas for our family parameters, let's actually consider what would happen if we allowed the user to use custom dimensions. The custom dimensions toggle allows the user to enter any size they want with the parameter reporting back to the width, depth, and height constraints. 
So let's go back to that amazing width formula that we created in the beginning of the video. We're going to adjust it and incorporate custom dimensions. Here, I'm going to work right under our original formula so that we can see the new changes that we are going to make. The first line of this formula is checking if there is a condition called custom dimensions. If custom dimensions are true or enabled, the formula will use the value of the entered block height. So if the user is using custom dimensions, you don't need any modifications to the width, and the formula just passes through the value. Now, if the custom dimensions is actually false, the formula moves on to the next check. Here it is comparing the enter width and the minimum width parameter. So if the entered width is less than the minimum width, the width will be the minimum width. Otherwise, if the entered width is greater than the maximum width, the width will be the maximum width. Otherwise, it'll be the width you enter. Let's go ahead and replace our old width formula with the new one that we just created. Let's copy and paste the new formula and put it under the actual width parameter in our family editor box. Let's go back and work our original depth formula and adjust to incorporate custom dimensions. Here, I'll work right under our original formula so that we can see and compare the differences between the new and the old formula. The first line of this formula is going to check if there's a condition called custom dimensions. If custom dimensions is true or enabled, the formula will use the value of the entered depth. So if the user is using custom dimensions, you don't need any modifications for the depth, and the formula will just pass through the value check. Now, if custom dimensions is false, the formula will move on to its next check. If the entered depth is less than the minimum depth, then our depth will be the minimum depth. Otherwise, if the depth that we entered is greater than the maximum depth, our depth will be the maximum depth. Otherwise, we have to round down our entered depth, divide it by six inches, and then re-multiply it by six inches. And remember, we always need to close out our formulas. So here, I'm gonna close out with three parentheses because I have three nested conditions within the formula. All right, let's go ahead and replace our original depth formula with our new one. Let's copy and paste the formula under actual depth parameter box in the family editor. Last time we needed to create three formulas for our height, but this time we're actually only going to adjust two of our formulas to incorporate custom dimensions. We're going to adjust our actual block height formula and our actual number of levels formula. We do not need to adjust our overall height since our overall height is going to be constrained by these two formulas. To make this easy, let's go ahead and work in order and rework our actual block height formula first. I want to make sure that this formula has custom dimensions included, but most importantly, I want the formula to change to allow the users to enter any size they want. Just like all the previous custom dimension formulas, the first line of the formula is checking if the condition custom dimensions is there. So if custom dimensions is true or enabled, the formula will use the value of the entered block height. So if the user is using a custom dimension, you don't need to use any modifications for the block height, and the formula will just pass through. But if the custom dimensions is false, the formula will move on to its next check. So here, it's going to compare the enter block height to the minimum height parameter. So if our entered block height is less than the minimum block height, we're going to use the minimum block height. Otherwise, if our entered block height is greater than our maximum block height, the block height will be the maximum height. Otherwise, we need to round down. So this will take the entered block height, and then it will divide it by 12, the height increment, and then round it down to the nearest whole number, and then remember, we multiply by 12 inches. This step will always ensure that the height will be a multiple of 12 inches for consistency. Now that we reworked that formula, let's go ahead and copy and paste that into the family editor. We're gonna replace it and input this into the actual block height parameter box. Now we have our last height formula to adjust. For our actual number of levels, I wanna incorporate custom dimensions, but I need to make sure that this allows the user to enter any integer that they want. The first part of our formula is going to check if we're using custom dimensions. If custom dimensions is true or enabled, then the formula will just take the number of levels that we've entered. If it doesn't pass that check, then we need to go down to the next line of our custom dimensions. Here's where the formula is going to start to modify the number of levels based on certain conditions. If the entered number of levels is less than the minimum number of levels, the formula will change the value to the minimum number of levels. Otherwise, if the entered number of levels are greater than the maximum number of levels, then it will adjust it to the maximum number of levels. So if it tried to exceed the maximum number of levels, it's gonna cap it at that value. Otherwise, if the number of levels that you've entered is between the minimum and maximum limits, then the formula will keep the value at what you've entered. Now that we have the new formula, let's replace our original formula in the family editor. I'll copy and paste it into the actual number of levels parameter box. 
For the last and final formula, it's essentially checking if a set of dimensional criteria for an object, like the component in Revit, is met, based on our width, depth, and height. If these conditions are satisfied, then the object is valid or acceptable within the constraints that we've defined. Let's go ahead and break this down so we can understand why this formula actually ties our whole family together. The first part checks if the width of the object is between 11 inches and 49 inches. This will ensure that the width isn't too small or too large. This will keep the object within a reasonable and standardized range based on the limits that we've set. The next line checks if the depth of the object matches one of the specific values from the predefined list of 12 inches through 48 inches. By limiting the depth to these exact measurements, the formula ensures that the depth is standardized for components that follow a modular design, or for the components where a more specific measurement is required for compatibility or aesthetic reasons. The last line is looking at the height of the object, showing the allowable increments from 12 inches to 48 inches. Just like the depth, Limiting the height to these specific values ensures consistency across our components and standardizes the design process. This info standard sizes formula is actually really beneficial in Revit because it provides a powerful way to enforce dimension control for components within our model. It ensures that the width, depth, and height of the object conforms to a specific rule or standard. This will improve accuracy, efficiency, and design consistency across your entire project. It particularly is helpful in large projects when dealing with modular components where strict dimensional requirements are essential for the design to function properly. Now that we have that new info standard sizes formula, let's go ahead and place it in the family editor. I'll hit apply and okay. Now this is where the fun begins. Let's see how this family adjusts using the formulas that we've created. Let's go ahead and change the width, the depth, the height, and the number of levels. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the width and the depth and height just a few more times so we can see how it looks. Look how great it is that we can actually change the dimensions of our family without having to do it manually each time. This is the power of formulas, and this is what you need to do in Revit every time you make families. Formulas have allowed us to create an adaptable family. Instead of manually adjusting dimensions each time I wanted to change my size of the object, our formulas work together to adjust the dimensions for us, so they actually do the work without us having to do it. This saves us so much time and effort in design and ensures consistency throughout our entire design process. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Again, I'm Haley from the Fetch Content Team, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.